something which come up with a brand new idea. Von Donneken saw something almost unexplainable in our ancient historical record. He said the aliens came to Earth, but he couldn't say why. Since his book came out in 1968, the theories developed a reason for the alien visits. It goes like this. Long ago and far away, a planet much like ours experienced its own global warming problem. The only thing to protect the planet's eroding atmosphere from the scorching rays of the sun? Gold. But they needed a lot of gold. So beings from that faraway planet searched the universe for an alternate source. Somehow, the extraterrestrials found us and a planet fairly oozing with gold. So they set up shop right here, making us virtual slaves to mine our earthly gold for them. While they were here, they built major monuments, like pyramids around the world, from Egypt to the Americas. They used those monuments to navigate the stars, and as landing pads for their spaceships. Maybe they looked like us, maybe they looked a little freakier. Whatever they looked like, supposedly the visitors taught us a lot about new technologies. Giorgio Tsoukalos is a protege of Eric Von Donneken. Today, he's bringing the ancient astronaut's theory to a new generation. Technologically speaking, we were still primitive and they just gave us a push, a gentle push in the right direction. As in, you know, they taught us in mathematics, they taught us in astronomy, in agriculture, and so on and so forth. But of course, the most important alien technology was mining technology to get that all-important gold. Where's the evidence of all this, you may ask? It seems the proof is all around us. If you look in the right places, you have archaeological sites, you have textual evidence. When the natives asked these beings, where did you come from? They never point across the ocean. They always point to the sky. Not everyone agrees. Veteran archaeologist Ken Fader thinks the backers of the ancient astronauts theory see only what they want to see. For them, it's like the, an extraterrestrial Peace Corps. You know, these people from outer space land on Earth, they look around after mating with us for a while, and they go, these poor dummies, we need to help them out. One place we can look for evidence is right here in North America, near Mexico City. Ancient astronaut theorist Ted Strain believes a mysterious ancient city called Teotihuacan is actually a place where extraterrestrials once mined and processed the gold. The theory being that something having to do with pyramid energy, cosmic radiation, solar wind, who knows, in combination with the shape of the pyramid, channel that energy and reacted with a certain way with the mica, causing like a chemical reaction to occur that helped the gold settle out of solution. But Teotihuacan isn't the only place aliens landed when they supposedly colonized us. All around the world, strange and mysterious structures seem designed for beings and crafts from another world. Not far from Teotihuacan is Chichan Itza, with a built-in landing pad on top of its main pyramid, and Baalbek in northern Lebanon, an ancient ruin of a massive stone something. But perhaps the most mysterious landing site of all, the Nazca Lines in Peru. The Nazca Lines have stymied mysticists and archaeologists alike for decades. Crisscrossing a high desert plateau, the lines have been around for at least a thousand years. Thing is, some say they really look like modern day landing strips. Some of these pictographs are a mile or two long in a perfectly straight line. Something that even today we'd have trouble duplicating without transits and all sorts of technical equipment. So how did the peoples from 3,000 years ago in Peru, how did they do this? There's no explanation. But more than just landing strips, there's something even more amazing. If you see them from above, 
monkeys and spiders and birds bigger than whole football fields. How could any ancient civilization have done this without the help of mechanical lifts, airplanes, or even spaceships? They could have had somebody up in a balloon or up in an airplane or up in a spacecraft or an anti-gravity craft directing them on where to draw the line. We don't really know. But one thing many say we do know is that once they landed, the astronauts got busy. Don't get out of visual. Keep on the road. According to the stories, they took us under their wings and showed us how to make and use tools. Like lasers to cut stones into neat slabs and blocks. Blocks could be made into the monuments from antiquity that still amaze us like the Egyptian pyramids. Archaeologists believe the pyramids are 5,000 years old. Each block of stone weighs up to 15 tons. And in South America, blocks on giant stone gates, pyramids, and megaliths standing watch at 13,000 feet, hundreds, some say thousands of years old, weighing up to 130 tons each. The kind of technology average humans would need to move these things, carve them, and illuminate them may seem too high tech for our ancient forefathers. But a hieroglyph deep in an Egyptian temple may give an astounding clue we simply can't ignore. But first, all this may tell us something about how the aliens could have affected us once they arrived on our planet. But you gotta wonder, how was their family life? Boys, I think we did they ever return to a faraway star, or did they stick around? There's going to be a large headline when they see all these great things we're bringing back to them. And are their descendants living among us? Seems far-fetched, but consider this. In the 1930s, a teenage girl was exploring in a cave in Mexico when she came across something remarkable. Two skeletons, half buried in the dirt. When she dug them up, she was amazed at one of their skulls. Could this skull be physical evidence that aliens not only colonized our planet, but changed the course of our human species forever? Author Lloyd Pye thinks so. I believe that the star child is not entirely human. This program is brought to you by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. Why don't you guys go outside and play? Hey, think I got here by sitting on my butt all day playing video games? Come on, get out there on a Honda. Who knows? Maybe one day some kid will be playing you. Introducing the new Honda CRF F Series. Unplug your kids. It's time to feel free with Chase Freedom. Feel free to choose points for rewards like travel. I'm free to do what I want. Or feel free to choose cash back. I'm free. Then feel free to change back again. Without losing a thing. That's freedom. That's Chase Freedom. Get it free at chase.com slash freedom. Clean up 26.4 on 5. Everyone, hold it. I just got a geological survey. It's exactly what we didn't want to hear. Are you like me? I have high blood pressure. And I have high cholesterol. Sometimes problems come in twos, but sometimes help can come in one, Catawit. Catawit contains the leading branded blood pressure medicine, Norvasc, and Lipitor, the leading branded cholesterol medicine combined in one pill, Catawit. Catawit is one of many treatment options I discussed with my doctor. Ask your doctor if Catawit's right for you. Along with diet and exercise, one pill doing two jobs for me. My doctor said Catawit's not for everyone. It's not for people with liver problems and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. To check for liver problems, you need simple blood tests. Tell your doctor about any heart 
heart problems and all other medications you are taking, or if you experience muscle pain or weakness, as they may be a sign of a rare but serious side effect. For blood pressure and cholesterol lowering benefits, it's Catawit. One pill, two medicines. Makes sense to you, makes sense to me. Ask your doctor if Catawit's right for you. Next, after 60 years, it is still one of the greatest UFO debates in history. It's the most important story of the millennium. What was really discovered in Roswell? The real Roswell, next on the National Geographic Channel. Let's say I do believe you. Where are we right now? Before we can learn if any skull proves the ancient astronaut's theory, we need to go way back to the very beginning. Well, it'll take days to analyze and compute. The earliest evidence of a human search for something outside ourselves. We may find the truth in ancient cave drawings. When archaeologists began studying the stories our ancestors left carved in stones and caves, some people noticed images and artifacts that just didn't seem to fit with what we'd always assumed our history to be. Many were hard-pressed to explain images like these of what appear to be men in spacesuits with helmets and antenna. Since the dawn of the field of archaeology, the accepted explanation has been that these images depict gods, nothing more. When I see an artifact, then I, it looks like there's a god and there's somebody floating up in the air, and I go, well, that matches what we know about their origin story. I'm guessing that they're depicting a god. I think that's a simpler explanation than somebody else saying, no, it could be an extraterrestrial who happens to have a levitation device. In the early 20th century, modern-day levitation devices got us thinking about those mysterious Nazca lines in Peru and wondering who could have made these amazing geoglyphs without direction from something or someone above. Others theorize that maybe we built them on our own after all when the aliens left us to return to their astral home. That's what Ted Strain thinks. The gods left and the peoples that were left over that had contact with the gods wanted them to come back. So they drew pictures on the ground saying, here we are. If you're going to come back, here we are. Land here. Over the top. With my Green Duck card. It's a lot safer than walking around with cash. You lose your card? Green Duck gives you back all the cash you lost. Protects my money. Green Duck prepaid reloadable MasterCard and Visa cards available at your neighborhood store. Do you know your credit score? Do you know what's in your credit report? You can find out for free right now at freecreditreport.com. Knowing my credit score helped me save money on my home loan. Now we can monitor all three of our national credit reports every day. It helps us save money.